satisfy, or a girl. Go through the land tilting at windmills. Meet life head on, instead of imitating it on a typewriter. Imagine my publisher talking to me like that. If he's right, I've run dry. I haven't been away from my flat for six years and nine mysteries. But I suppose the creator of a private eye has to get out in public every so often. And I hate to travel, unless it's in the Commonwealth. Otherwise, you meet so many foreigners who don't even speak English. And all those beastly tourists, mostly American. They don't speak English either. Spain for you. Personally, I prefer the Battersea Power Station. Although that doesn't exactly raise goosebumps either. Now, let's see. F8 at a 50th should do it. Grain, five and a half. Lepidoptera rocolosera, male. Pollinating a buff beauty hybrid tea. It's a curious union. Spain, I suppose. Follow a fluttering butterfly. I'd rather follow a girl. Derek Carson would have met at least two gorgeous creatures by now and put up the mission accomplished sign. Sometimes I wish I hadn't created Derek Carson, private eye. But then it's been fun writing about a secret agent so secret it doesn't even have a number. Of course, if I did see an attractive girl on this tour, when would I have a chance to make her uh, acquaintance? The tour bureau has practically every minute budgeted. No time scheduled for hanky-panky. Not even on the deluxe tour. Make it 75, mister. No other guide will make you better. These other fellas only give you the routine guide to be done. But I can show you things. There's the bus, ready to leave now. That's it. They can have my window seat. Guided tours are for the misguided. No, please, no more. Really, please, please. Really, really. No, thank you, thank you, but no one called. No, I, I'm in rather a hurry. You're, you're very kind, but I, I really must be off. No, don't you understand? No. I think you need help. Thank you. How do you say no in Spanish? No. Well, apparently they don't speak Spanish. Permit me, please. Mm -mm. Here it comes. Taxi, please. Oh, thank you. Hands on your wallet, boys. The museum, please. On the way to the museum, there is a bazaar that I highly recommend. Very interesting things. Very interesting. Senor, a uh, popovor, a uh, uh, young lady, uh, in a big hat, mucho sombrero, uh, 
Donde. Donde. Ahí. Gracias. Gracias. See the signs, lady. A personally guided to a crony of Honda Pesetas. No Sorry. other guide will make you a better lad. Next time, I'll take the bus. Hmm. I say, it's all right. Johnny, they, they, they call me Johnny. I, I seen it. I... I'm sorry, I didn't quite get your name. I wonder if you could stop just for a moment, could you? What are you saying? <laughs> you excuse the interruption, I'm sure. The, the truck can try to hit her, kill her, murder her. Don't you understand? I'm afraid I don't quite. Listen, you listen to me. You understand English. I beg your pardon. That truck had tried to kill the girl. Which girl? Where is she? She's gone now, Mr. Lawrence. She was in Peppy's Bazaar. She cashed a check there. But Peppy will tell you. If you permit me. I, I seen it. My friend Johnny's not reliable. They call him Johnny Jim with good reason. Mm -hmm. An American play. Poor man. How many drinks does he eat? It's his way of life. He's never sober. They, they tried to murder her. I, I... Johnny, what's the matter? Anything is wrong? They, they won't listen. That girl. Come on, I listen. Come on, let's go. Let's have a drink. And you tell me all about the girl, huh? All such waste. The ruination of one of the greatest talents I've ever known. Really? Thatcher? Hard to believe. What was he? A pickpocket. Yes, drinks ruin many a career. Doesn't seem to be subtle now. Where's he got to? Oh, he's already forgotten his story about the girl and the murder. Yes, Mr. Larko, we must hurry to the Alcazar before it closes for siesta. Ah, so confounded. That man may be right. The girl's life may be in danger. It'd be much more pleasant to forget the whole blasted thing, but... Oh, but it may take you days to find Johnny again. And even then, he doesn't know who the girl is. I'm well aware of that. I have no intention of wasting my time with Johnny. I don't may need help. I must find her and make certain. She's here in your shop in the far star bar. Perhaps even less. There's were many senoritas. All the time, senorita. But this one cashed a check. Two senoritas cashed check. No, three in pasta bar. You have the checks, of course. Oh, si. Sí. George Osborne. George no es señorita, ¿no? No, hardly. <laughs> mm. Winifred Jordan, Hotel El Fuerte. Hmm? Miss Jordan, is she a young lady? 
A senorita. Senorita, young. Oh, yes, she buy $40 of nylons. Very young. Perhaps senor is interested. We win on nylons. Cheap, reasonable, huh? No, not just for a moment. May I see that check, please? Now, these other senoritas. Vamos a ver. Agnes Leonard. Her I know. Her name is Leonard. Is she a young lady, a senorita? Mm. She is senorita, si. And you thought there might have been one other? Una otra. She by perfume. Scent of mystery. Magnifico. Irresistible, si. He says, young lady, she never mm. used any other perfume. Very subtle. Never will. Senor. We cheap, 1,000 pesetas only. How many? No, no, I never touched the stuff. The senorita, what's her name? Her name? Hmm. No, no, no. Ah, this one. Fifty dollars. See, I take back me pesetas for perfume. Sally Kennedy, Hotel Inglaterra. Hmm? Thank you. Muchas gracias. Marvelous scent, that. Taxi, please. What? Oh, it's you. Your money. I kept the meter running. Past the Hotel El Fuerte. Si, senor. Muchas gracias. Right now, I'm scheduled to be at the alleged tomb of Columbus. Wait here a moment. Instead, I find myself on a public beach in search of a strange young woman whose life is in danger. Please don't disturb yourself. I wonder if I'm being too forward. Do that again. I beg your pardon. It is a man. Mr. Orden, yes. this is rather awkward, but I have reason to believe that someone may, if I only say may, be trying to kill you. You wouldn't be trying to sell me some insurance, would you? Not at all. I'm simply trying to warn you. Sit down and warn me. Do you know of anybody who might want to kill you? I wouldn't tell you even if I did. What do you think I am, a squealer? Mr. Jordan, I'm serious. It may well be that you're in need of protection. Hey, have you got a friend? I beg your pardon. Because I have a friend who may very well need protection, too. Now, if you could dig up somebody cute for her, why, the four of us could have a ball. And I was afraid of being too forward. Is that the one? Is her life in danger? Constantly, I'm sure. <laughs> Miss Leonard, please, I... Please, 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 Mr. Larker. Don't move. Don't move a muscle. Miss... Miss Leonard, I absolutely... I'm getting you. I'm getting you. I'm getting the very essence of you. Just another second. No, not another second. I must be off. It's absolutely essential. And if you won't pay any attention to my warning, it's no concern of mine. I've done everything I can. Now, stop being a silly, silly boy. Look, get behind that screen. Behind that screen? Disrobe, dear boy. Disrobe, dear boy? Yes, so that I can do a proper sketch of you. Torso musculatore. in my time, just imagining things, which I suppose is an occupational disease with me. There's probably no more to it than a girl buying a bottle of perfume, or Johnny Gin buying a bottle. But there's that scent again. I can almost see her, very chic, very petite, say, 
36, 26, <laughs> 86. Oops, wrong number. Yes? I'm afraid you're in the wrong room. Miss Kennedy? Yes. Miss Kennedy, this is most embarrassing. You must let me explain. Uh, do please sit down. Thank you. Miss Kennedy, my name is Oliver Larker. I'm here on a holiday, a holiday which I richly deserve and badly need. A holiday, I may say, which has been completely blighted by some silly female. Miss Kennedy. That mate is a bit of all right. That's to say, Miss Kennedy. Miss Kennedy, I've reason to believe that your life may be in danger. My life in danger? Somebody's trying to kill you. Please forgive me for being so blunt. But you're in need of protection. I should be most happy to provide it for you, personally. No trouble at all. Mr. Larker, you are serious. And you did say someone is trying to kill me? Oh, absolutely, no doubt about it. But who could possibly want to kill me? I've no idea at the moment. And I gather you haven't either. No, I can't think of anyone. Mr. Larker, you must be wrong. Come now, let's not get discouraged. I'm sure we can think of someone. You do need protection. I'm convinced of that. But why do you think I'm in danger? Miss Kennedy, you were in Pepper's Bazaar today about noon, right? You clashed with Victor. I saw the two. Then you walked down the avenue to Vittorio's. At the first corner, a truck tried to run you down to murder you. Oh, yes, you're in danger, no doubt about that. At this very moment, you may have to say. Put your hand in the It's just a clock. I say. Mr. Locker, I don't remember hearing any This rings a bell. What did you say, Miss Kennedy? The Avenue to the Toros. I don't remember being there. I took a long walk, but... Miss Kennedy, would you mind putting this on? Please. It may be a matter of life and death. Your life, your death. I must insist. Thank you. Now turn around. Please, Miss Kennedy. It seems to me that I've had that girl in these glasses before. Oh, I'm sure it's the same girl. She had style, even from the rear. Miss Kennedy, you're wrong. You must have forgotten. But you were in the Avenue de Torres today because I saw you there. You saw a truck try to kill me? No, I didn't actually see that, but a chap named Johnny did. Miss Kennedy, we must go to the police at once. Johnny? Who is this Johnny? Well, they call him Johnny Jim. Oh, no, Mr. Larkin, not Johnny Jim. You know him? No, but I know about him. Who doesn't? Oh, except you, apparently, Mr. Larker. Really well, that's it. I suppose I've had it. Pity. I suppose she thinks I'm trying to scrape up an acquaintance with her. <laughs> really, Mr. Larker, Johnny Jim? Well, I must admit I had certain reservations about him uh, in a case like this. Uh... No, I'm afraid I'm just Johnny's latest hallucination. Perhaps I should be flattered. Well, I suppose I must face it. You don't need any protection. Still, why don't you generally, I mean, a girl alone in a strange country? Thank you, but I'm not alone. There's my brother, you see. Your brother? You have a brother here? You're quite certain? Half-brother, really. But if I ever do need protection, he'll be all I need. Yes, I suppose so. Well, oh, that's that. <laughs> Look here, you're sure he's quite capable of this half-brother of yours? Of course, undoubtedly he is. Anyway, half a brother's better than none. <laughs> well, splendid seeing you. <clears throat> Mr. Larker is disappointed. No pretty girl's life is in danger. We'll discuss it. Let's get on with the tour. Yes, sir. The gypsy cave, please. Hurry, please. We must get back on schedule. Please, sir. When you slam the door of my taxi, it's, it's like slapping an old man. It could be fatal.
won't be any more trouble now. You want to take a picture? Sally. Mr. Larker? Nice name, that. Mr. Larker, with you, you shouldn't miss it. What? Oh, yes, magnificent. No, 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 the other side. Oh, yes, of course. Foolish of me. Yes, it is glorious, isn't it? More inspiring. Makes one realize. And all that sort of thing. suppose I did let my imagination run away with me. Still, meeting Sally was a lot more stimulating than visiting Columbus's tomb or even watching these gypsies. But I suppose that's a closed chapter. I thought you said you'd taken care of your name. Can't believe it. The brandy I poured into him. The girl. You, you've got to help me find the girl. There is no girl, Johnny. You decided that. Don't you remember, Johnny? You've got to find the girl. Beautiful young girl. Too pretty. Johnny? Nobody listen, but I'll find somebody. Johnny. Oh, oh it could be an opening chapter. If, if I wrote a story about Sally, Romance for a change and sell a melodrama. Anyway, it'd be one way of meeting her again. And of course, you'd have to be protected from that predatory character, Mr. Derek Carson. Yes, better make a note. Never let Carson and Sally meet. Wonderful, aren't they? Wonderful. Mr. Larker, 15 years ago in Marrakesh, there was a girl in my life. I came to my senses. Otherwise, today and I, I shudder to think of it, I could be a happily married man. And that could happen to you. Aren't you rather jumping to conclusions? No, no, no. That could happen to anyone who isn't very, very careful. Think of your friends who got married. Let them be a lesson to you. Yes, now you mention it. Makes one thing, doesn't it? It can change a man's whole life. You want that? Oh, I've grown accustomed to my life. Oh, it hasn't been bad, really. No, indeed. Quite the contrary. Do you have a place of your own? All one needs, really. Bed, table, chair. And relax, put your feet up. Well, Mrs. Gawley, my landlady, is rather inclined to frown at feet in her chip and there, but I, I do manage it occasionally. Do you have your meals alone and a 
night after work, you're free to do as you please. Absolutely. You want to come to Spain for a holiday, you come. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I must get a shot of this. <laughs> and now to the Alcazaba. <laughs> Thank you. Wait here, please. Take your time, Mr. Larker. Johnny Jin, murdered. I saw it. Johnny Jin? But why? Because he was right. The girl's life is in danger. The girl? Sally Kennedy. Quick, we may be in time. Can't you go any faster? Oh, blast it. Let me drive. Let you drive my taxi? Mr. Larker, you... You may eat my food. You may drink my drink. You may spend my money. All right. You may live in my house. You may wear my clothes. I just want to be sure that Mr. Locke understands. Where is he going? Where are we going?
I say. I suppose this camp has seen so much action since the Battle of the Marne. Where can she be going? Casablanca friend's wife. Oh, we had two. I only took the small one. Express. Twenty minutes late. The trains in Spain seem mainly in my lane. Once a year, they have a little celebration here. Noisy, but worthwhile. Keeps the boys out of trouble. <laughs>
Mr. Larker, there's only one road out of this town. We can't possibly catch her now. We can't possibly. Shall we go to the bullfight instead? No, of course not. Carry on. Adios. Stop and turn around. My taxi's just getting warmed up. No, it's hopeless. You must be miles ahead of us by now. Turn around. Where are we going? To the nearest police station. <laughs> Trust you have a spare. I have five. It's simply a matter of choosing the likely candidate. Hurry, please. We mustn't lose her. Perhaps I can keep her in sight from those rocks up there. There she is. Gray-beaked Thatcher. Female. Now, where did he tittle off to? Instant bellhops. A breezy Joan doth keel the pot. <laughs> Yuck. Johnny Jen. Now it's Larker on the rocks. David Orlando said a suit pressed. Persistent beggar. Trouble is not only broadening, it can be flattening too. in a gunboat in.
Akron indeed. The 44. No doubt from the same rifle that was peppering me. Rifle, Mr. Larker? You didn't hear any rifle fire? No. But then, when I'm changing a tire, the world could come to an end. I'd never notice. Sally Kennedy. Hmm. Well, of course. It's exactly what she would do. I just see him in town. How did he get here so quickly? Oh, on one of those trains, no doubt. She's not here. Too bad. She's here, all right. She's taking one of those cottages over there, the Villa Flora. How do you know? I looked at the register. The last person to register was Constance Walker. Rather clever of her, I must say. Very convincing name. Rings with authenticity. Yes, but I'm not sure I know what Mr. Lark is talking about. Now, look here, it's obvious. Under the circumstances, she wouldn't dare use her own name. Too dangerous. Even if I'm in trouble, she's here incognito. And for heaven's sake, when we speak to her, we must use that name too. Constance Walker. Constance Walker. Come on now, let's reconnoitre the Villa Flora. Keep under cover. Isn't it? What? Oh, yes, I hadn't noticed. Last is inconvenient place to have it. Miss Kennedy. I presume. Is she in there? I can't say positively. May I suggest you look again? No, indeed you may not. I wouldn't dream of it. She's dressing. Oh, oh, I understand, and I admire you for it. But it's a matter of life and death. I'll volunteer to look. We will go and have a drink on the patio until she's presentable.
Thank you. Thank you very much, my Liebling. I will use that card, if you don't mind. Sorry, you're a monster. Oh, I love you. I wish my George had manners like that. George, does he rough? Welcome, senor. And you, senor. Paco, Bill Martini from Miss Walker. She'll be here in a moment. How are you, Jim? She feels all right. How are you, Jim? No, no. She said Miss Walker will be here in a moment. Oh, yes. Must have looked in her window since you did. Paco, make it a drink for everybody. On the house, in the party. Baron, take Miss Walker's martini out on the terrace, will you? Jack. Well, how many hearts have you broken today? Ah, very few. This is my day off. Well, you seem to be very happy. What's happened? Did you win the lottery? I found a beautiful stock. Huh? Sword, you know? Oh. The fellow said it belonged to Manoletti. Manoletti? Tommy, my boy, one day you will bring home a whole bull Manoletti killed. I keep trying. That's a good boy. What are you drinking? You must keep your head. Special coffee, very strong. Miss Walker's martini. Yes, I know. Mm-hmm. Cognac. Not at the moment. They are imported. Don't think why. Well, we all have our hobbies. With me, it's bullfighting. With you, it's the ladies, huh? Mm, perhaps. Not a bad club this year. Oh, excuse me, madam, but this table is reserved. Oh, it is? Yes, and I'm afraid this martini has been spoken for. Has it? Yes, it, you see, it was ordered in advance by Miss Constance Walker. Well, what's going on here? Well, perhaps you could explain, sir. This martini is for Miss Walker, Miss, Miss Constance Walker. Well, I'll do my best. Now, Tommy, none of your jokes. Just explain to this young man to mind his own business. Okay, Connie, young man, mind your own business and let Miss, uh, Miss Walker drink a martini. Miss Walker? But you can't possibly be, be Miss Walker. If you don't mind, may I see your passport? Passport? Certainly not. And how dare you infer that I don't know who I am? Yes, you're a little out of line, young fellow, aren't you? What's the matter with your friend? Forgive my friend, Mr. Larker. Mr. Larker, come with me tonight here. It might do you some good. Well, get him out of here. Now, Mr. Larker, for your own good, admit that you are wrong. Never. Even if I am wrong. I wonder whether you would help me. Do you speak English? Yes, of course. Well, I was to join a friend of mine here. Well, an acquaintance, really. And I don't seem to be able to find her. Oh, what is her name? Well, it's rather awkward. I met her at a party at Gibraltar yesterday. We got along famously. <laughs> we discovered we were both going to drive up the coast today and decided to meet here. As for her name, I don't know if I heard it, really. It was a frightfully noisy party. Perhaps if I described her to you. Perhaps, yes. Well, she was a stunning girl. Beautiful, actually. Yeah. She was a striking blonde. Beautiful young blonde girl. <laughs> hmm. Have you seen her? No. A blonde girl. No, she is not here. Well, she was driving a red Mercedes drophead. No, she has not arrived. Perhaps without Madam No. Impossible. Oh, I see. Well, I'm sure you won't mind if I look around. Not at all. But I assure you, you are wasting your time. Could I speak with your bellhop? No, uh, bellhop? Yes, the young man who looks after the luggage. We have no one like that here. There was a boy here, in a green jacket. Perhaps the senor has the wrong hotel. Oh, no, I don't think so. Not for a moment. Oh, no, indeed. Thank you, madam. Obviously, she's in on this jiggery pokery. this at all. <laughs> Miss Kennedy may realize her danger. She may be in hiding. But why can't we find the bellhop? 
It's been my experience one can never find a bellhop when one needs one. Hey, you! Where are you going? Uh, uh, no, nowhere, really. You aren't registered here. You haven't a room. That's quite true. Who are you? What do you want? What's wrong with you creeping around the place annoying the guests? Now, you get out of here. You're not outside of here in two minutes. I'll call the police. Mr. Kennedy. Yes? The bartender would like to see you if I have a moment. Kennedy? No, it can't possibly be. No, Mr. Larkin, no. Is it possible that Miss Sally Kennedy is your sister? Yes, it's possible. No, it isn't possible. No, no. So now I don't know whether I've got a sister or not. Well, where is she? I, I've been trying to find her. You know her. I haven't heard her mention you. Well, I only met her recently. I'm very anxious to meet her again. I wouldn't let any sister of mine within a mile of you. Now, please leave quietly. My sister is not here. She's in town. She was in town. I met her there at the Hotel Inglaterra, but now she's here. Oh, she's here. My own sister's here, and I don't know it. Mr. Kennedy, I shall prove to you that your sister is no longer at the Hotel Inglaterra. I shall call the hotel, and they'll tell you she's left. Of course. She's not at the hotel, and she's not here either. Well, where is she? Where do you think she is? I know exactly where she is. At this moment, she is with friends on board a yacht in Malaga Harbor. Any minute now, that yacht will take off for an overnight cruise up the coast and back. How do you know she's on the yacht? How could you be so sure? Because I put her there. I drove her from the hotel to the yacht. Tommy, what is it? Oh, Margarita. Well, what are you shouting for? What's wrong? Oh, nothing, dear, nothing. Just a little discussion. Mr. Larker, this is my wife. Wife? Such an attractive young man. He makes so much trouble. Good to see. Someone is dressing? Hardly. Oh. That's her car, all right. Obviously, an effort's been made to conceal it from us. From you, Mr. Larkin, not from me. Anyway, the girl is here. Her brother and his wife have got her somewhere. We must go to the police. You must go to the police, Mr. Larkin. But her life is in danger. Our lives are in danger. Your life, Mr. Larkin. And then I wonder if instead of running up a bill, you mind paying your taxi fare as we go along. Gladly. I saw a lady with blonde hair. Remember, I've only seen you, Miss Kennedy, from the rear and from a great distance. It was Miss Kennedy, all right. We've got to get her out of here. If her brother sees you... He won't. I'll manage that. You wait in the taxi. Keep out of sight. I'll be as quick as I can. Where are you going to take her? Don't know yet. I'll decide that when... Shh. I wish you luck, Mr. Larker. But in the event, it was very nice knowing you.
coast seems clear now. when I have Derek Carson to do something like this. Manage that nearly. Not a soul about.
resilient, all right. Gentlemen. Oh, dash it. Kennedy, are you all right? Yes, but you, are you hurt? No, I'm all right. Now, do you mind if I, if I open these, these wings? Uh, <coughs> I'm so sorry to intrude on you like this, messing up the, up the place. He's still breathing. Have you met this gentleman before? No, never. Oh, I say, bad like that. Perhaps you realize now that your life is in danger. Yes, I know. That's why I came here to my brother. My poor young lady, I, I have to tell you that your brother is... He's coming, too. I have him covered. Don't move. Miss Kennedy? As if you didn't know, my boy. No, and I'm still not sure. My glasses. Your glasses? Good Lord, I assure you, if I'd known you were wearing glasses. No, on second thoughts, under the circumstances... Please, don't mention it. Yes, you are Miss Kennedy. I know you from your pictures, even though they don't do you justice. Yes, yes, we all know Miss Kennedy is an uncommonly attractive young lady, but I hardly think that he's pointing out at this moment. Five seconds ago, you were trying to kill her. Kill her? I? When I found you in this room, I thought you were trying to kill her. Oh, come, you can do better than that. Who hired you to kill? You idiot. I have no intention of trying to kill Miss Kennedy. Far from it. Permit me to introduce myself. Richard Fleming, of the law firm of Lynch, Crandall, Sheldon and Small of Boston. And I have papers here that'll prove I'm acting solely and completely on your behalf. Mm. <clears throat> I hereby appoint you as the successor of the trustee of this trust. Stay with it. Well? Yes, these papers seem perfectly in order. It appears you're being left as of your 25th birthday. Ah, tomorrow. The sum of approximately three min... <laughs> Three million dollars will, will to you by your aunt, Miss Frida Atwell. Exactly. And you see, if Miss Kennedy should die before midnight tomorrow, then the three million dollars will go to her brother Tommy as next of kin. Midnight? Tomorrow? They mean to murder you in the next 27 hours. Quite possibly tonight. When they lied about your being here, I knew for certain. I felt for sure my fears were justified. Miss Kennedy, your brother and his wife do mean to murder you. No, I don't believe it. Not Tommy. You hardly know your half-brother. You never saw him till you came to Spain. We've become so close. Of course, for his and his wife's own good. Ominous. Not a soul in sight. We have to get Miss Kennedy away immediately. Right. If I might make a suggestion, uh, I'll take Sally and... Sally? I gather you mean Miss Kennedy. Oh, yes. Sorry. Larker, you stay. You keep an eye on Tommy and his wife. Don't let them out of your sight. Now, Miss Kennedy, if you please go and get ready. Mr. Larker? I want to thank you for all Not now. Done. We've got to get going. Fleming, I can't let you do this. I should never forgive myself. Oh, why? Generous of you, but I must put my foot down. I can't let you take the dangerous end. Now, listen. No, no, I can't bear the thought of you out there in the night in a strange country. Alone with Miss Kennedy. I shall go with her. You stay here. Listen, Larky, you're wasting time. Very well, then. We'll toss a coin. Heads or tails? Okay, if you insist. Heads. Sorry, old man. Okay, okay, but you must get going. 
But how will you go? You don't have a car. I do. No problem there at all. It just so happens I have a taxi waiting. I'll bring it round. Wait here. This is as close as we can get. Better turn your engine off. That infernal thing will give us all away. My meter doesn't give anything away. It's the bellhop. But why Pedro? Because of me, I'm afraid. He would have told me you were here. He would have led me to you. Nothing. I'm wrong, I'm sure. You thought you saw someone? I'm just nervous. I'm seeing things. Well, you must tell me. Well, I thought I saw my brother's car. But you're not sure? No, but it looked like sure. it. Sure. We must ascertain whether we are being followed or not. Take the next right. The next left. The next right. I'm sorry, but no one seems to be following us now. I'm not surprised. Seville, let's go there. Why Seville? The biggest fiesta's there, and if anyone follows us, we can lose them in the crowds. Seville. Where? Quick in here. Mr. Lager, you're hit. Only by a geranium. But you might have been killed because of me. Oh, come now. I, I can't let you do this for me. I have no right to put your lives in danger. She's got a point there. Now, look here. Mr. Lager, forget it. You must forget about me. I can manage. I'll be all right. Oh, look. Where is she? She's gone.
Get back up that letter, you idiot. More money. Get up that letter. More money. I'll do it for you. You do it for nothing, you amateur. Parker. Yes? I haven't had anything to eat in 24 hours. Frankly, I'm starved. Sorry, but we must keep moving. But what's the use of this if we starve to death? I know a little restaurant not far from here. No, no, we're still being followed. I'm convinced of that. No one would follow us into this restaurant. How could you be so sure? The food is deplorable. He should have put a tiger in his tank. Can I be of any help? No, Mr. Locker, you may not. He'll soon realize and come back looking for us. How long will it take you to fix it? It varies from a few minutes to several days. Well, let me help you. Where are your tools? In Barcelona, in a pawn shop. sense in wasting this tonight, eh? Mr. Locker. Okay, now, all set. Uh, seems to me since you took this long, you might have taken a few moments longer. I see your meter never stopped running. Yes, it did, Mr. Larker, it did. But only for a few moments. I fixed it first. Hmm. That's strange. Well, why not? 
Which way, Mr. Larker? To the right, of course, away from him. From here, we can see if we're still being followed. Good idea. I think we may have shaken him off. Thank goodness. We must keep moving. Oh, wait. Have you ever seen such a view? An incredible vista. Leaves one absolutely speechless. Would Mr. Lark have any tobacco? What? Tobacco. Oh, yes. What was I saying? Oh, yes, nothing. I was speechless. Mr. Larker, will both of you step closer together, please? And now a step back. <laughs> I suppose I should apologize, my dear. Hardly fair of me. You see, I took the precaution of removing the bullets from that gun when I realized that you possibly were not Miss Sally Kennedy. The perfume the real Miss Kennedy invariably, exclusively uses the scent of mystery. Your perfume, if you will permit me, is rather inferior. Hey, my taxi! Sorry about that. You may never see her again. She gave me the best years of her life. She did 30 miles to a gallon. Not now. It's nice and safe here. You're right, but we must find the real Miss Kennedy. Fleming couldn't possibly have realized the blonde was a decoy. It's up to us now. We must get to it in time. Come on.
first step. The Madrid Express, on schedule, 20 minutes late. Eight more hours. They have eight more hours to do away with Miss Kennedy. Why do you worry? The lawyer, Mr. Fleming, he's watching over the brother and the wife. Fleming may not have been as fortunate as you and I. He may no longer be alive. Sally? Sally, darling, listen to me. No, no, you can tell me about your sailing trip when I see you. You've got to get out of that hotel right away. I say you've got to get out of the hotel right away! What? No, no, you can't come here, no. No, we'll meet someplace else. Meet me at the old fortress. How long will it take you to get there? Oh, fine. I'll see you there, then. The West Tower, in about 40 minutes. Oh, goodness, bad luck. No, terribly sorry. I can't help you. I'm afraid I don't have a car. Oh, come now. You must. You know, I really wouldn't know what to do with one up here. I mean, there's no roads. I mean, how do you get about? Look here, actually, this is a matter of life and death. Unless you can help me, a young lady will surely lose her life. Hmm. Don't suppose you fly? Fly? Do you have a plane? Oh, of sorts. Do you fly? Well, actually, I did a bit. The 76 Squadron, four group. Good Lord, you're not lucky, Lark, of the 76. My dear sir, I've never been more honored. Lucky Larker. <laughs> Fluttering butterfly, follow me. Hope this doesn't turn their milk to cheese.
decent air pocket and we'll be residents. Mr. Larkham. <clears throat> That's great to be at the controls again. Flimsy but plucky craft. parking space about. This should do nicely. Maybe he's ahead. I cannot believe my calculations are wrong. There it is. That's the one. Farm it. Oh, honey man, hurry.
Mr. Kennedy. There he is. We took her on stairs. We can't get to her in time. Is he going to push her off the wall? That way. Where is Fleming? Where is he? I prefer not to think where he might be. There he is. There's Fleming. Good show, Fleming. He saw through it. They didn't fool him. Well, we've done it. Or rather, Fleming's done it. Good show, Fleming. American know-how, I suppose. That American blend again. Great heavens, what a fool I've been. What is it, Mr. Lark? I remember saying, one never knows. Mr. Lark! Sorry, I knocked you down. It was an accident. Uh, I owe you a further apology. Yes, I misjudged you. I confess I, I thought you were behind this scheme directing the others. But of course, it, it was Fleming. Fleming, yes. Thanks. And of course, it wasn't hard for him to interest your wife and her friend, the Baron, in Miss Kennedy's fortune. With Miss Kennedy out of the way, you, as her brother, would have inherited yeah, it. Of course. Excuse me. Gonzalez is fighting today. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yes, obviously, my dear wife would have borrowed the money from me and split it with a friend. There is just one point. Uh, the, uh, the blonde girl. She, of course, was a decoy. Fleming's girlfriend. Ah. No. No. We don't make them like that anymore. Tell me, how in the world did you realize it was Fleming? The bad that could only be Gonzalez. Tobacco? Yes, just now my taxi driver was smoking tobacco from a pouch, which I'd accidentally taken from, uh, from Fleming. And it was the same tobacco that I smelt after the truck had nearly killed Miss Kennedy, your sister. So I knew it was Fleming. Incredible. Uh, I don't know how I can ever repay you, Mr. Locker, for having saved Sally's life. Oh, come now, it was nothing really. I, I just happened to be in Spain and... Uh... <laughs> Tell me, who are you? Who am I? Oh, just an Englishman on holiday. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, forgive me. Sally, darling, this is Oliver Locker. Lucky Locker. Never have written an ending like this. It is incredible.
The sand of mystery. The sand of mystery. 